All right, good morning again, everybody. Sarap ng mainit na kape talaga. Anyway, uh, welcome to week number 14. Uh, no look now, December 7, uh, so patapos sa talaga ang semestre. We still have two modules left uh, for Math 174, modules 10 and 11, and then you'll have your final project. Uh, final project. Yeah, I guess I already gave you the guidelines for the final project, and um, I hope you are forming your groups now. Those who want to be group or to be assigned to a group, uh, kindly let me know. Probably after the class, I'll uh, I'll send an email to you guys to uh, containing a link to a Google Docs wherein you can sign up for uh, for groupings. So, kung gusto niyo magwork with the group, either two members three members or four members, or if you want to work solo, that's fine. Pero dahil marami kayo sa klase, ano, ang gagawin ko na lang ay dun sa Google Doc, ay yun na lang mga wala pang ka-group ang mag-fill up. If you already have your group, uh, your group mates, so kayo na yung mag-usap-usap uh, mag na kayo on your own, maximum of four. You can work solo if you want, you can group in uh, in pairs, uh, in um, in a group of three or group of four, Pero yun nga, kapag ka group of one or uh, kapag ka solo or pair, written output lang yung kailangan. Kapag ka groups of three or four, kailangan yung magpasa ng written report at saka oral presentation, which could be recorded. And all of them will be due on January 11. Now, yung mga gustong magka-group pero walang masyadong kakilala or halimbawa, Tatlo na kayo, gusto nyo i-maximize na parehas lang naman yung output. So baka may isa pa tayong makuhang uh, naghahanap ng ka-group. So uh, sign up in the Google Doc that I will uh, give you. Tapos i-check nyo na lang regularly yung Google Doc. Baka kasi may nag-fill in na. Ganto na lang siguro yung gawin nating protocol. Ano? So kung sino yung nag, uh, huling nag-sign up dun sa group, responsibility nyo na i-contact. Kayo yung may prime uh, responsibility to contact the other members already in the group. So, halimbawa, meron ng naka-upload sa Google Docs, si Victor at saka si Nicolette, halimbawa, magka-group na sila. Tapos may tinira pa silang slot na dalawang free. And then, then halimbawa, si Prince gustong sumali sa group nila. So, Prince will write his name on the number three slot in that group. And then, we'll contact Victor and Nic uh, and Nicolette saying, hey guys, uh, nag-sign up ako dun sa group nyo, so what should we do? So, ganun, para, para medyo organized yung ating paghahanap ng groupings, ano? And if you have any concerns or questions, just let me know because that's a big chunk of your grade. I just forgot how many points uh, or how many percent ang um, kinocover ng final project. There, that's a huge chunk, ano? And uh, speaking of the project, I allotted or I will, uh, I will um, set aside 10 points from the final project that will come from your evaluation. You know? So there would be two evaluations that I will ask you guys to answer. Number one is the university uh, mandated uh, student evaluation of teachers. It's already ongoing in SAIS and I think it will last until December 9. That's why kanina umaga, nagawa ako ng isang, uh, isang quiz kay Canvas asking you whether you already answered the uh, the student evaluation for the lecture and the lab um uh, yeah for the lecture in the lab so kung nasagutan niyo na siya last week or uh before uh, nasagutan niyo na siya talaga so punta kayo kay Canvas hanapin niyo yung quiz uh, i think it's named SET under final project so answer it as by a yes or a no if you answer yes uh i will assume that you already uh, answered the student level and then you'll get the five points. That's the five points out of 100 in the final project. Okay? Tapos, uh, siguro next week, ilalabas ko yung internal, uh, uh, yung internal instrument ko for your evaluation of me and the course. Uh, yun ay internal lang. Gagamitin ko lang siya para sa pag-develop ng sarili ko at saka ng course. So, kailangan nyo rin siyang sagutan. Doon magagaling yung additional five points uh, for the... Um, for the final project. So that means the final project will be 90 points over 100, and then the 10 points will be coming from the student level. You cannot get an uno in the final project if you will not answer the uh, student evaluation. So no, so kailangan nyo siyang sagutin. Uh, ang medyo crucial doon, ang medyo urgent ay yung SET, the official university document, 
which will be due on December 9. I think magklo-close yung size module ng student eval on December 9. And I really want you to uh, to participate there. Ano? Kasi ito na yung pagkakataon nyo na gumanti sa amin. If you don't feel that we delivered uh, up to your expectations, then give us your honest, uh, honest, uh, your honest feedback. Ano? Kasi yung grade na yon na binibigay nyo sa amin, actually, hindi namin malalaman kung sa inyo nagsagot. So you can be as candid as you want, ano? as truthful as you want, which is what we want. Ano? So magsasagot kayo doon. Tapos, Report card lang yung ibibigay sa amin. So siguro one semester from now or two semesters from now, makukuha namin yung average scores na binigay nyo. So meron lang dong number from 1 to 5. Uh, I think 5 is the highest. Tapos nakalagay doon kung ilang points yung grade namin for this particular class. Halimbawa, naka 4.5 ako sa class nyo. Then that would be my final grade. And that will be used for my promotion, for my... Uh, for uh, sa mga temporary faculty members kung marirenew sila or hindi. And so on. So, that's really the time that uh, you can give your reviews of us. So, parang Shopee or Lazada lang yan. So, kailangan yung i-review. Whether you like us or not, so please review it. Because if you like us, then that's a good way to show your appreciation. And just to not let the university know na, oh, yung teacher ko dito, ang ganda ng pagkakadeliver. If you're, if we, um, uh, if we did not deliver up to your standards, it's the same way. You're telling the university, Uy, pausapin niyo tong faculty niyo na to. Uh, hindi niya na-address yung, uh, yung expectations ko from the course. So it will work uh, both ways, but either case, it's anonymous. So feel free to give your honest uh, and truthful evaluations, okay? Yeah, December 9, yung deadline. And the Canvas submission bin for that uh, question will also close on December 9. So if you don't want to miss the five points, and lucky on five percent the final project, so kindly answer it as soon as you can. And I think that's our housekeeping matter for today. Now, so for today we'll start module number ten, and siguro towards the end I'll try to show you some uh, sample projects from way past, ano? So para ipakita ko ano yung inexpect ng outputs niyo. But first, let's go to module 10. And in module 10, the goal is to look at some uh, some peculiarities of numerical integration formulas. I've mentioned ng numerical integration formulas or at least numerical quadrature formulas that we've met, they're pretty straightforward. They transform the, the difficult integration problem into simply computing function values, putting some weights to them, and then adding them up. Kasi nga, kinukuha lang natin yung linear combination ng mga function values ng integrand multiplied by some weights. Nakakatalo-talo lang yung iba't ibang numerical quadrature rules depende dun sa weights na ina-assign natin dun sa mga function values. On one hand, we have the newton coates quadrature rules that uses and uh, that use uh, the Lagrange interpolating polynomial. So it will really, it really just replace the integrand by the interpolating polynomial for the function little f. Tapos lang ini-integrate niya ay yung interpolating polynomial because who don't love uh, integrating polynomials? It's quite uh, straightforward. So ini-integrate niya yung interpolating polynomial and apparently the result is a quadrature rule because you will see that it, it is just the summation of the function values of the integrand times the... Uh, integral of the Lagrange basis polynomial. So yung integral ng Lagrange basis polynomial, sila yung serve na weights sa Newton quadrature rules. And the other one would be the Gauss uh, Lagender quadrature rules or the Gaussian quadrature rules. Sila naman yung pinipili yung mga abscissas at saka yung mga weights so that the maximum degree of precision is achieved. So it is trying to do to find the best weight so that makuha mo or ma-integrate natin lahat ng polynomials of degree n or less. And we have learned that if you want to do that, then you're going to need, uh, or if you have n points, you can have at most 2n minus 1 degree of precision. And apparently, uh, una ang tawag ko sa kanya Gaussian lamang kasi yung idea is, uh, I think, is attributed to Gauss. But the weights and the abscissas actually turns out to be related to Lagender polynomials. And I think that's the video recording that I asked you to watch 
because that gives us an alternative way to compute for the weights. Kasi nakita natin dun sa maliit nating mga examples, nakakakuha tayo ng, uh, ng 2n by 2n equations, which is non-linear in nature, so medyo mahirap siyang gawin. Halimbawa, gusto mo ng 10 uh, points ang gamitin so that you get degree of precision 19. So ibig sabihin, kailangan mag ng 20 by 20 uh, linear, um, system of non-linear equations. And that's a daunting task. Ano? So pag dami ng nodes na ginagamit, mahirap nang i-derive yung, Gauss, uh, yung Gaussian quadrature rule if you will be, do, uh, if you'll be using the definition, which is integrating all polynomials of degree 2n minus 1 or less. Now, na-discover ni Legender na, oy, or actually, hindi ko alam kung si Legender, pero somebody uh, discovered that the abscissas that should be used in the Gaussian quadrature rules are associated with the roots of the Legendre polynomial, right? Nakita niyo yung parang ano, ah, may connect yung Legendre ngayon at saka yung Legendre before. So, hindi lamang nagbiminimize ng L2 norm ng error uh, para sa interpolation ang uh, Legendre abscissas, pero sila rin yung nakakapagbigay ng highest degree of precision sa isang Gaussian quadrature rule. And the associated weights, actually, I think, is a function of the derivative of the Legendre polynomial. Meron tayong formula na 1 over something, right? So that's another candidate para dun sa ating theoretical part no ating uh, problem set. So uh, if you haven't watched that video, then kindly watch it. Or if you want, you can simply read the second half of module number 9. Kasi nandun naman siya, I think uh, I tried my best to write it in um, in a very understandable fashion. You know? So sana uh, makukuha niyo siya. But if you have questions, just let me know and then I'll be happy to entertain you during consultation hours. And yeah, or watch the video recording that uh, uh, yung recording ng uh, lecture ko last year, which discusses this, that part of module number nine. So today, titingnan natin ano pa yung mga kulang. Parang ang, ang ganda na, no? na-develop natin theory ng numerical integration. But we will see some issues with this numerical integration formulas. So what we want here in module number 10 is, number one, to explore the Romberg integration method, which is basically a extrapolation routine that is designed to address some of the shortcomings of the quadrature rules. And then second, Kahit na-address mo na yung mga issues na yun, posibleng meron pa rin mga anomalya na nangyari or uh, ang dahilan ng mga anomalies na to sa numerical integration formulas ay dahil mismo dun sa integrand. Okay? Kasi meron mga integrand na hindi basta-basta or hindi na-attain ng mga quadrature rules yung kanilang promise potential. Halimbawa, meron kang formula of degree big uh, of order big O of H squared so, and then it will work fine for some functions little f, pero makaka-encounter makaka tayo ng isang pasaway na function little f na, uy, bakit nag-underperform si, nag si numerical integration formula? Pwedeng instead of a big O of h squared, ang convergence lang natin na-observe by big O of h. Gumagana siya, pero hindi ganon, uh, hindi as expected. It's subpar the... Uh, uh, yung kanyang performance, all right? Hindi niya nasusunod yung uh, yung expectation natin doon sa numerical integration formula, all right? So those are our objectives, and let's get going uh, by talking about Romberg integration. Now this uh, this method is proposed by Werner, Werner um, Romberg. I just forgot the year when. Pero this uh, particular method is an application of Richardson extrapolation formula. So if you want to know how this formula was uh, derived, this is very similar. This is exactly the same as what we uh, seen when we did numerical integration formula. Kasi nga sabi natin dun sa, sa Richardson extrapolation, nung nag numerical differentiation tayo, the formula that you obtain there is applicable to any... Um, to any formula or any method of order big O of H squared. And makikita nyo, yung gagamitan natin ngayon ng Richardson extrapolation na naging basihan ni Romberg ay degree big O of H squared. Kaya nga siguro mapapakamot kayo ng ulo later, sabi nyo, oy, naunahan na ako ni Romberg. 
Kasi parang in-apply niya lang talaga yung Richardson extrapolation sa composite trapezoidal rule. And voila, you have a formula name after Werner, uh, Werner Rumberg. <laughs> and anyway, so we'll talk about that. And what the Rumberg integration does is parang ina-address niya yung mga shortcomings ng numerical integration or ng quadrature rules in particular. For instance, um, some of the methods, uh, they are, um, though, uh, they, though they are theoretically independent of the number of subintervals. Big sabihin, kung makikita nyo, mapapansin nyo yung formula natin para sa uh, error or sa upper bound na composite, say, trapezoidal or composite, uh, composite uh, Simpson's rule. Hindi na, kaya nating tanggalin yung dependence nung, uh, nung error term na yon sa number of subintervals used o sa step size na ginamit. That's why numerical integration formulas are preferred uh, over numerical differentiation formulas kasi mas malaking epekto ng step size o number of subintervals sa differentiation kesa sa integration, lalo na kung composite rule. That's why pag halimbawa nagsasolve kayo ng differential equations, ano, um, may dalawa kang sing options. Pwede mong sagutan siya as a derivative problem or i-convert siya into an, integra uh, an integration problem. And usually, doon kami, uh, kami pumupunta sa integration problem kasi hindi naapektuhan or hindi malaki yung epekto ng step size doon sa, doon sa performance ng method compared to dun sa behavior na numerical differentiation formula with respect to the, the change in step size. Because the smaller the step size becomes, nagiging mas, uh, ang tawag dun? mas nagiging sensitive o nagiging mas hindi reliable yung numerical differentiation formulas. Okay? Pero kahit na, theoretically, dapat hindi na apekto ng step size ang quadrature rules yung machine implementation niya naman ay posible pa rin maapektuhan. Kasi pag dumarami yung subintervals na ginagamit, marami kang kinocompute. At sa bawat computation mo, may round of errors na nagagaling sa computers. Kasi nga, pag nagpagawa ka ng computation kay machine, i-carry out niya pero up to some decimal digits lang. Kasi finite yung computers natin. Halimbawa, nagpa-compute ka sa kanya na one-third yung tamang sagot. Hindi niya ibibigay sa iyo yung one third na eksakto, hindi niya ibibigay yung 0.3 bar. Siguro ang ibibigay niya lang ay 0.3 followed by 15 more 3. So, labing anim na 3s after the decimal point yung ibibigay niya. E pag ginawa mo yon ng isang daang libong beses, ibig sabihin, ang dami mong nawala or posibleng significant na yung nawala sa yon na digits kasi 100,000 times mo siya ginawa. And that will compound per computation lumalaki yung error. So, yun yung problema sa machine implementation. And then, uh, since that's the case, since we are still influenced by the step size, yung pagkuha ng optimal number of step size insofar as integration is concerned ay mas mahirap. Alright? Hindi katulad ng numerical differentiation formula, which is another uh, candidate for the theoretical part of the problem set, yung paghanap ng optimal step size, parang andali lang, no? Kasi kukunin mo lang yung theoretical error, tapos kukopyain mo yung shadow nung no, round off error, tapos optimize ka lang with respect to H. That's easy. Pero for numerical integration formula, that's quite um, difficult. And I guess the most pronounced issue that is addressed by Romberg integration is the pessimistic nature of the established error bounds for numerical quadrature formulas. Hindi tight yung bounds. Ibig sabihin, yung upper bound na nakukuha natin ay medyo OA, medyo conservative. Alam ba, sinabi nung, nung um, kasi di ba, ang error term dun sa uh, Newton code sa limbawa ay nanggagaling sa integral ng error term galing sa interpolation. And the error term dun sa interpolation is a little bit exaggerated. Hindi siya tight. Ibig sabihin, the error is much less than the upper bound. Pero yun yung pinakamadaling makuhang upper bound, kaya dun na tayo tumigil. So, posibleng yung error ay super mas maliit kesa dun sa declared upper bound. Which is valid. Upper bound pa rin naman siya, pero hindi nga siya ganun katight. Kaya yun yung sabi ko rito. Medyo pessimistic. Napaka-nega nung nakuha natin na, na estimate. Right? So, ibig sabihin, 
if you have a specific error threshold in mind, mga gusto mo yung error ay 10 to the minus uh, 10 to the minus 4 halimbawa. Iko compare mo yon dun sa error bound, di ba? May mga tanong tayo na find the step size such that the error will not exceed say 10 to the minus 4. Tapos kukunin mo yung upper bound, gagawin mo siyang less than 10 to the minus 4 and then you're going to solve for h. Pero pessimistic yung upper bound mo ginagamit. So ibig sabihin the h that you will get is much smaller than the h that you really needed. So kasi nga pessimistic your yung bound, medyo conservative siya. So masyadong maliit yung ibibigay niyang h than what you needed. But eventually you'll get what you wanted. You'll get an error that is guaranteed to be less than 10 to the negative 4. But this is much much less. It's such an overkill, ano? So halimbawa ibibigay ng computation mo galing sa pessimistic error bound na dapat gumamit ka ng h equals 10 uh 10 to the minus 6. Pero yung error mo pala makukuha pag ang ginamit mo na h ay equal sa 10 to the minus 6 ay 10 to the negative 16. So you did much work than what was required because you might just be required to use h equals 10 to the minus 3. So instead of palimbawa gagamit ka ng 10,000 uh, subdivision points, pwede palang 1,000 na lamang. So you could have saved some, uh, some computational resources kung hindi pessimistic yung mga upper bounds. Ito yung focus natin. Paano siya in address ng Romberg integration. But before we explain how Romberg integration takes care of that pessimism, tingnan muna natin, paano nga muna ginagawa ang Romberg integration? Baka naman pala napakahirap ng Romberg integration, so why do it? <laughs> so bakit, hindi, magrara na lang ako ng numerical integration formulas kasi nga, dun sa intro ni Sir, sabi niya kanina, madali lang yan. May mga issues, pero that would be forgivable. You know? Sorry, I, I can't resist sipping uh, another, uh, uh, sipping my coffee there. Pero, ito yung steps sa pagka-carry out ng Romberg integration. And in a nutshell, Romberg integration is just an application of, or a, rep a repetitive application of the Richardson extrapolation formula to the composite trapezoidal rule. The composite trapezoidal rule is known to be of order big O of H squared. So whatever Richardson extrapolation method we develop in uh, in module what or yung section natin on numerical differentiation is applied to the composite trapezoidal rule. So if you want to look at the uh, the derivation of it, so you can visit the lecture notes by Professor Lambers. Uh, in upload ko siya dun sa module ten uh, sa Canvas. So go to Canvas, go to the modules tab. And then look at module number 10. Meron dong isang file na Lambert's Lecture 29. So that will contain the uh, derivation for the Richardson or for the Romberg integration formula. Meron ako dito ng typo. Dapat Richardson. Sorry, Richardson. Okay. So pero ito yung step. Sinamarize ko na lang siya dito. Una, gagawa ta, i-apply natin yung trapezoidal rule na ilang beses. Actually, uh, it, it, uh, it depends how many times you want to do uh, the composite trapezoidal rule, pero dapat ay kinakalahati mo yung, um, yung step size, right? So you start with the, so you can start with say step size equals uh, D minus A over 2, okay? Tapos gamitin mo rito yung trapezoidal rule. So meron kang trapezoidal, uh, meron kang Meron kang interval A, B, tapos mag-trapezoidal rule ka muna sa kanya. So, ibig sabihin, ang step size mo ay B minus A over 2, right? Kasi, ah, tama ba? B minus A over 2. Aha, aha. No, ang step size mo pa rito ay B minus A, sorry. Kasi simula kay A, papunta kay B, ang haba na yon ay B minus A. So dun sa B minus A na yon na, na step size, so ibig sabihin, hinati mo yung interval, uh, lagyan natin 2, 10, 0, hinati mo yung interval A, B into two parts, right? Tapos dun ka magta-trapezoidal rule. So save mo lang kung ano yung nakuha mo sa trapezoidal rule. And then, now do the composite trapezoidal rule, pero ngayon H equals B minus A over 2 na yung step size. Kakalahatiin mo yung previous step size. So rito, composite trapezoidal rule na yung gagamitin mo. So essentially, we began 
with the interval 0 to uh, A to B. Tapos magta-trapezoidal rule ka dyan. Ba, ito yung points na yan. So, ito. So, ibig sabihin, ang area na nakuha natin in the first uh, step ay ito. Yung kulay yellow. Right? Tapos, susunod, magkocompose si trapezoidal rule ako, pero kakalahatiin ko yung step size. So, yung step size natin kanina ay B minus A. Kalahati nun will lead us to the midpoint. Right? So, yung bagong step size na ay B minus A over 2 to the 1. Right? So, ibig sabihin, mahati yung interval ko sa dalawa. So, meron ako, alimbawa, ang function value kay A plus B over 2 ay hindi nandito. Okay? So, ngayon, dito ako magtra-trapezoidal rule. I apply ko yung composite trapezoidal rule. So, ibig sabihin, sa, sa, sa bawat sub-interval, magtra-trapezoidal rule lang ako. And so my estimate, my second estimate for the derivative uh, for the integral is this one. Yung kulay orange. Tapos kakalahatiin ko uli yung bagong uh, step size. So I'll do step size say um, b minus a over 4. Apat na yung, yung nasa step size so ibig sabihin makakalahati yung mga sub intervals. So may Meron ako dito A plus B over 4. Tapos nagkakaroon 3 ng A plus B over 4. Halimbawa, yung function values nila ay nandito. Function value nito, halimbawa, ay nandito. Pag mga ilang. Kasi medyo oscillatory yung naisip kong function. Ano? So, ito yung mga trapezoids na kukunan mo ng area. Okay. Ito yung function value rito. So, trapezoid, trapezoid, trapezoid. So, makukuha mong area using the composite trapezoidal rule ay ito. Sum ng areas ng mga trapezoids. Yan yung magiging estimate mo. And then you do this uh, as many times as you need. You know? So, and then we set this aside. All right? So, yan yung nakuha mo sa trapezoidal rule. Now, the second uh, step is to get uh, is to get our uh, to get our notation straight you know? so we will denote by r sub j, uh, kj yung mga approximations natin na nakukuha where k controls the step size while j indicates the level of extrapolation so we start with uh, j equals 1 and k equals 1 to be consistent with matlab so ibig sabihin, when j is equal to 1 we haven't done any extrapolation yet Tapos yung k, siya yung control dun sa step size. So when k equals 1, ang ating step size ay b minus a all over uh, b minus a. So ibig sabihin, yung nakuha natin dun sa basic trapezoidal rule, hindi pa siya composite kasi ang h lang naman natin ay b minus a over 2 to the 0. Tatawagin natin itong r11, right? Because we are at the first possible step size, which is b minus a, and then we are doing we are on the first level of the extrapolation, meaning wala pa talagang extrapolation na naganap. Okay? And then once you take half of the original step size to be your new step size, you apply the composite trapezoidal rule with step size B minus A all over 2, then we'll call the estimate there R21. Kasi nakalahati na natin once yung uh, step size so nakapa uh, so nakapag divide na tayo ng 2 to the 2 minus 1 ano so ito yung second instance a uh, second step size na ginamit natin which is half of the first tapos wala pa rin tayong in, uh, extrapolation na ginanap or na ginawa so ito yung uh, level 1 extrapolation okay tapos yung kulay blue rito yung estimate na yon yun yung tatawagin nating r31 Kasi ito na yung patatlong step size na kinonsider natin on the first round of the in, uh, of the extrapolation procedure. Okay? Good? Good so far? So, you can repetitively use the composite trapezoidal rule para makuha mo yung mga R sub K comma 1. Makakabuo ka ng isang mahabang column ng laman niya ay puro resulta ng composite trapezoidal rules using step sizes that are half of the previous step size, okay? Now the question is, 
how do we how do we compute the levels of extrapolation, right? Kasi nga ang gagawin natin mag-organize tayo ng tableau, yung mga columns, level of, in, of extrapolation, tapos yung uh, mga rows ay step size yung kanilang um kanilang kino-consider. Now, the step size here is b minus a all over 2 to the k minus 1, right? Kasi kapag kasi k ay equal k1, this would be b minus 1, uh, b minus a over 2 to the 1 minus 1, so that's going to be b minus a. Kapag ka nakay k equals 2 na tayo, ito ay magiging 2, so b minus a over 2 and so on. Okay, so yun yung h natin. For the succeeding column entries, ito lang yung formula. Para compute si RKJ, kailangan nyo si RKJ minus 1. So ito yung nasa same row, pero previous column, minus the one from the previous diagonal. Yung nasa previous row, ibig sabihin previous step size at previous level of extrapolation, divided by 4 to the J minus 1 minus 1. Okay, I hope this is simple. Kaya gusto ko munang ma-fill up yung unang column. And there's no problem with the first column kasi puro composite trapezoidal rule yan. Once I have a bunch of RK1s, I can just apply this formula, but this time J is equal to 2. Pag nakompleto mo na yung column para kay J equals 1, pwede mo na magamit itong formula na to para mahanap yung rows ng column J equals 2. Tapos pag meron ka ng column na J equals 2, magagamit mo yung mga entries niya para makompute yung mga laman ng third column, the column when J is equal to 3. And so on until you get uh, a desired level of accuracy. Okay? So any questions about that? I hope wala pa. At mukhang wala pa. Or tulog na kayo dyan. Now, learning math is, uh, basically math is not a spectator's game. So for you to really appreciate or you to be used to using formulas, you need to get your hands dirty. You know? Try to recreate example 10.1. I will not do the calculations. After all, I use a spreadsheet to generate this value. You know? So kindly try to replicate this table because that would be a good practice. Uh, because here we look at Richardson extrapolation in action. So dito in approximate ko ule yung LN2, right? So in approximate ko yung LN2 with the knowledge that LN2 is exactly equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x dx. So gagawin ko, i apply ko ngayon yung Richardson as uh, yung Romberg integration uh, method para sa function or para sa integrand na 1 over x. Okay? Kasi tingnan ko anong itsura ng Romberg integration tableau. So yun yung tawag natin sa table such as this. Okay? Now, unang gagawin, gumawa ka, gawin mo na yung first column. And the first column is just a repetitive application of the composite trapezoidal rule using step sizes that are half of the previous. So itong unang entry na to, which is R11, this is your starting approximate. Ito ay si R11. Okay. Trapezoidal rule lamang uh, with step size 2 minus 1. So nag-trapezoidal rule lang ako. Hindi pa siya composite. And then R12, or sorry, R21 is basically a composite trapezoidal rule using three points. So ginamit ko si 1, 1 1.5, at saka kay 2. So, nag-trapezoidal rule ako dun sa dalawang sub-intervals and I took the uh, the sum of those approximates and I get 0 0.783333, alright? And that will go into here. So, that's R22. This is R3, uh, sorry, that's R21. Now, this one is R31, R41, R51, okay? And then now, I will now compute the second table, uh, the second column of the table. But remember, to get the entries on j equals 2, ano, para makuha si j equals 2, kailangan mo si j equals, uh, ito ay 1, ito ay magiging 1. So kailangan natin yung mga entries mula sa first column. But which entries from the first column? The kth entry and the k minus first entry. 
So that means I cannot have a value at R12. Kasi para ako magkaroon ng R12, ang k ko dyan ay equal k1, kailangan ko ng R sub 1 minus 1 comma j minus 1. Pero there's no R sub 0. So that's why this part of the tableau is vacant. So you can imagine the tableau to be a lower triangular matrix. It's a siyang matrix na walang laman yung nasa ibabaw ng main diagonal. Okay? Now, how did we get this guy? So this guy is R22, right? So that means K equals 2, J equals 2. Just apply this formula with those parameters. So, no, so I'll have 4 to the... 4 to the 1, because it's 2 minus 1, times R sub 2, 1, minus R sub 1, 1, all over 4 minus 1. Tama ba yung substitution ko? Hopefully, tama. Do you have four, four, uh, R2, 1 with you? Yes, this is R2, 1. Multiply it by 4. Subtract from it R1, 1. Divide the answer by 3 you get the new entry here, the R22 entry. Okay? Ito na yung uh, kinamit natin ay yung second step size ang nag-prevail sa kanya, tapos nasa second level na tayo ng extrapolation. And then you do that for all of the entries in this table. Tapos ngayon, kapag ka nasa third column ka na, pabaguin mo lang, J is equal to 3. You'll have j equals 3. Tapos, wala ka uling k equals 2 kasi uh, hindi, wala, wala, kang, wala kasi itong laman. So, hindi ito pwede magkalaman. Right? Kasi riba ang ginagamit mo, yung katabi niya at saka yung previous sa kanya. That's the pattern, right? So, for instance, r33 will be computed as 4 times what? So, ito ay k equals 3. 4 to the 4 to the 2, I say 4 to the 3 minus 1 times R3, 2 minus R2, 2 over 4 squared minus 1. Okay? And that's how you will get this guy and the rest will follow. Okay? And hopefully you will get this tableau as well. Now, the best uh, approximate among these numbers will be the one in the last diagonal. Okay? Siya yung supposedly pinakamagandang estimate. But you can report this if you want. You can report this. You can report this. Pero since you computed this guy, this will prevail in the end. That will theoretically give you the best approximate to the integral you were given. Okay? Does that sound straightforward? Hopefully it does. So, huwag na kayo magugulat sa exercise sa Monday, ha? Na super dali. All right? So, uh, kasi there's, not, there's nothing very, uh, very fancy about this, you know? Okay, now, when will you know to stop? Because you can, you can spend your entire life, the rest of your long lives, you know? Doing a Romberg integration tableau. Hindi ka mauubusan ng a Romberg integration tableau. Especially if you have a very powerful computer that will or that can handle a lot of decimal digits. So, hindi ka mauubusan. Pero ang tanong, kailang ka titigil? Of course, titigil ka kapag ka yung error threshold mo ay na-meet na. But unfortunately, in some cases, we don't know the exact value of the integral. That's the precise reason why you, why you are using integration formulas kasi hindi mo alam yung value ng integral kasi kung alam mo na yung integral pwede mong kunin yung relative error compare this to the actual value so take their absolute difference divide it by the actual value and then you're gonna get the um, the relative error and if that re relative error passes your um, your test or your threshold then you stop titigil ka na Mabawa ang threshold mo dapat ay 5% yung relative error, then you stop when the diagonal entry, the current diagonal entry, has relative error less than or equal to 5%. Kasi pwedeng dito ka muna mag-start. Ito muna, test mo. 
Lampas na ba ng 5%? If, yeah, uh, if hindi pa, dumiretso ka pa. So para dumiretso ka, to get to the next diagonal, you should get this guy because this guy is involved in computing the next diagonal, the second diagonal entry, right? So you're going to use this and this to get this guy, all right? Tapos ngayon, iti-check mo, okay na ba to? Pasa na ba yan dun sa aking convergence test? Kung hindi pa siya pasado, then you, you make another row of the tableau. So kailangan mong i-compute ito, right? Kailangan mo siyang idagdag kasi kakailanganin mo yan para makuha ito. Kasi para makuha itong 0 0.69325, kailangan mo itong nakabilog at itong may bagong bilog. Tapos ngayon, para makuha yung third diagonal entry, kailangan mo ito at saka ito doon sa Richardson formula. Okay? And then itetest mo, pasado na ba ito? Kung hindi pa, add another row, add another row until you get the error threshold. Pero sir, paano kapag ka hindi ko po alam yung... Uh, yung actual value. So, wala po ako makukuha ang relative error. Well, this is one of the uh, uh, usually used uh, uh, halting criterion or stopping criterion. You look at, are the two previous best estimates significantly different? Kasi kung hindi na sila significantly different, ibig sabihin yung computations na dinadagdag natin ay hindi na nakakatulong sa pag improve no method, right? Kaya kung makita nyo sa formula na to, titignan natin yung RNN. That's the best estimate that you have because that's on the nth diagonal minus the one on the n minus first um, uh, diagonal, right? So diagonal minus previous diagonal scaled by 2 to the n minus 1 kasi ito yung nagbabago dun sa mga step sizes natin. It's uh, varying by a power of 2. And then you look at this guy. Is this less than some error threshold? that is given to me or that I set in the beginning. If it does, then you stop the criterion, you report RNN to be your estimate. Otherwise, you add another row, you get R sub N plus one, comma N plus one, and then you compare it with RNN and see if the tolerance is met. So in a Romberg integration problem, I will give you the actual integrand, the interval, of course, that should be used, plus the error threshold epsilon. Okay. So yan, kompleto na yung magiging uh, ano nyo. So nakita nyo, na-address niya yung pessimism na binibigay sa atin ng error bound. Kasi rito, parang ano tayo, parang operationalized yung pagko-compute natin ng error or ng convergence. Kasi parang hindi mo kailangan magtrabaho more than you needed. Kasi nga, ang sabi nga nila, work smarter, not work harder. Ano? Kasi kung gusto mo mag-work hard, E di gumamit ka ng napakaraming points para ma-satisfy yung pessimistic error bound. But if you want to if you want to be smart about it, just do as little work as needed. So ang ginagawa mo, mag-Romberg ako, titigil ako kapag ka na-meet ko na yung error level. Kung hindi ko alam yung error level, I will extract the best that I can. I will perform Romberg integration hanggang wala nang significant improvement yung mga best approximates na nakukuha ko after adding rows. Okay? And that's the story of Romberg integration. So children, do you have any questions? <laughs> Inaliw ko na lang yung sarili ko kasi hindi na kayo nakikipag-participate. Ano? At least ayan, gising pa pala kayo. Ano? Gusto nyo lang pala ng mga ganun pang gugulat. All right, so that's uh, Romberg integration. Siguro I'll spend, pwede bang umutang ng five minutes? That's, uh, let's uh, part ways 925. Para lang magpakita ng ilang projects, ano? Para meron kayong idea kung ano yung target yung gawin. Uh, let me stop sharing from my tablet and I'll shift sa king uh, uh, desktop. Let me just open my folder. Come on. Uh, Victor has a question, sir. Which usually comes first? Maubusan ng rows o ang error tolerance? Uh, technically, Victor, hindi ka maubusan ng rows. No? Kasi ang gagawin natin in practice ganito. Mag-umpisa ka muna sa one row. Right? Which is basically your trapezoidal rule. Tapos, sitting naman, na-meet na ba? nung resulta ng trapezoidal rule yung 
error tolerance. Kung hindi pa, ngayon, saka ka lang mag-a-add ng second row. Right? Pag nag-add ka ng second row, automatically magkakaroon ka ng second column. Right? Kasi yung R11 at saka yung R21 magagamit mo para makompute si R22. Ngayon si R22, yung nasa, second, nasa diagonal ng second row, siya yung itetest mo ngayon. Na-meet na ba ni R22 yung error tolerance? Kung hindi pa niya yung nami-meet, saka ka magdadagdag ng rows. Okay? So you add rows only when you need them. Kaya yung sabi ko kanina, yung intro ko kanina, na gumawa mo na kayo ng mahabang, <laughs> mahabang first column, uh, hindi niya siya talaga kailangan. So pwedeng install installment, yung paggagawa niyo ng rows. So um, yung example ko kanina, wala pang idea ng tolerance. So siguro dapat binago ko yung presentation. But anyway, yun yung, uh, yun yung isa sa mga ideas. Ano? So you only add rows whenever you need them. So hindi siya, I mean, hindi ka maubusan technically ng rows. Mauna mo, so, so technically, dahil infinity yung number of rows na posible, mauna kang, maunang ma, masatisfy yung error tolerance kesa dun maubusan ka ng rows. Okay? So I hope that answers your question. Okay? Kasi kung kulang pa, kung hindi pa namimit si error tolerance, magdadagdag ka ng row. Yan yung pinaka-idea ng Romberg integration. Right? So I hope that answers the question. So let me uh, share uh, probably some projects. Ito ay may, may bas-bas naman or pinagpaalam ko naman to dun sa mga authors. So uh, you will see uh, this work. So for instance, this is... So ang pinagawa ko sa kanila ay uh, parang katulad din ng sa atin. Uh, you apply things that you learn from Math 174, be it interpolation, be it uh, be it a numerical differentiation or be it numerical integration to a certain problem and it's up to you to think of uh, a certain problem right so um bahala na kayo umisip ano yung ano yung interesting sa inyo na problem and then you center using uh you center around using the methods on data or information that is related to the problem that you are seeking to answer so, limbawa ito, uh, this is the project of Sir Angelo Marisigan and this group. Ano ang year to? Ang malalaman nyo na <laughs> nung panahon na to, nag, nag-lecture na ako ng Math 174, ano, nung mga panahon to. Si Jante ko pa, Sir Jacob, si Sir, um, kino ba? Sir, um, Sir Angelo. Actually, marami na. Siguro mga 20 or 30 percent na mga faculty sa math naging sudyante ko sa 174 or something like that. But anyway, lumalabas yung edad. Pero anyway, yeah, magkakasing edad lang kami nung panahon na yun. Pugas kamay, ano? Anyway, so ito yung ginawa nila. So dahil si Sir Angelo and his friends are doing financial math, they, they thought of, oh, why not apply Monte Carlo simulation, which will be in module number 11, to do a risk note a uh, risk neutral valuation of asian and look back options this is a very loaded title na kinabahan ako nung umpisa but the nice thing about them is that they wrote a nice introduction introducing the reader the non specialist reader that i am into some of the technical terms that they tried to incorporate in the pro in the project so parts of the uh, parts of the project that i want you to have or the write up that you want that i want you to have would be an abstract which is a short introduction or description, a synopsis, or this is the teaser for what is to come in the paper. So, papakita nyo lang yan sa akin. And then after the uh, abstract, you, you write a brief introduction, a page, two or three pages, uh, telling me what's the problem, what's the motivation, what's the significance of the problem, plus probably you can also mention why you chose to work on this problem. And why do you think uh, the numerical tools we learned from Math 174 uh, will help into solving this particular problem? So yeah, we have an introduction, and the options contract, and the call option, and the put option, uh, new strike or exercise price, exotic options, Asian options, etc. And I think reading this paper made me dream of investing in the U.S. Uh, stock market. Kasi meron silang, uh, meron silang options. Parang sa Pilipinas, wala pang options eh. 
Pero ang hirap makapasok kasi sa US tax uh, kasi non-resident ako no. Ang daming tax papers na kailangan i-prepare. Pero uh, yeah, so nagano na lang third party uh, managers. Hindi na ako mismo yung nag-option option. But anyway, this is a nice uh, yeah, a nice introduction to be followed by the theoretical framework. So nandito na yung mathematics. Ano yung mga formulas? So ano yung mga quantities na kailangan yung i-quantify? What are the variables involved in the project? So in a more scientific uh, in a more scientific research paper, this could have been the methodology section. Pero for math or applied math uh, papers, instead of a methods uh, a materials and methods section or methodology section, pwedeng theoretical framework, numerical framework or pwede pa rin namang methodology. So dito niyo ikukuwento sa akin ano yung mga Ano yung mga concepts? What are the formulas involved? Uh, how are they quantified, etc.? And then also a quick introduction of the method that you want to uh, the method that you want to uh, to illustrate. Uh, imagine the reader to be a non-specialist. Hindi natin ka klase sa Math 174 yung babasa ng final project. So kailangan makita nila, maintindihan nila yung gist ng method na i-apply nyo. So limbawa dito, diniscuss nila quickly. Pwede kayong mag-refer dun sa modules, pwede kayong tumingin ng third-party materials online or some other printed books, etc. Just to give the reader a general overview of what the method is. Siya yung parang ano, nasa pagitan ng layman's description and uh, a school discussion or a classroom discussion. Ano, uh, medyo technical siya, hindi siya pang layman, so ikukwento nyo talaga yung method itself. Pero hindi na makadetalyado na para tayong nasa classroom na parang modules na tinuturuan niyo yung reader. So you're just giving the reader enough rudimentary knowledge about the particular methods that you are using. Tapos kung gusto niyang pag-aralan ano yung, ano yung detalye behind the methods that were used, maglagay na lang kayo ng reference. I-refer niyo siya dun sa textbook natin. I-refer niyo siya dun sa modules natin. I-refer niyo siya sa Wikipedia. Though... Wikipedia is still fr uh, frowned upon pa rin pala sa academia. No? Pero look at some legit sources, some books or some journal articles. Kung saan yung reader, pwede niyang basahin yung mga detalye para hindi niyo na siya ilalagay lahat sa theoretical framework. Theoretical or numerical framework. Bahala na kayo mag-title uh, kung tingin niyo mas methodology ba siya, mas theoretical framework ba yung dapat siya, or mas numerical framework yung pangalan niya, and so on. And then you'll have a results and discussion section where you apply the method and then you discuss what insights did you get from uh, from your simulations or from your calculations? What are the results? Ano yung nakuha yung value? Ka paano niya ina-address yung particular problem? Right? And then you'll have, uh, you will show all your results. Kung may figures ka, dyan mo siya isasama. And then the conclusions part will be just a summary of what happened. Okay, parang ano lang, uh, kwento nyo lang, uh, it's a further, uh, it's an extended version of the abstract. Dito mo sinasabi, ano yung nakita natin from the study? What conclusions can be uh, observed from the uh, from the results of the of the the, uh, the study? Then of course, you'll have your references here. Um, wala akong required number of references, so kung ilan na yung kailangan, yun lang yung ilagay nyo. And also the data sources should also be in the references. Okay. Tingnan ko pa. Uh, some used the uh, uh ito yung medyo mabenta, maraming gumagawa nito year in and year out. They uh, look at uh, estimating the area of the Taal Volcano Island using polynomial regression and Monte Carlo simulation. So idea here is ganun uh Kinuha nila yung picture sa so siguro. So alam niyo na yung ano, alam niyo na yung intro, yung mga parts na hanapin ko, right? The generic parts that I'll be looking for. So ito yan, meron silang discussion ng regression analysis. Tapos dun sa methodology nila or dun sa mathematical description and solution, right? Yun yung tawag nila sa section nila. So ang ginawa nila, kumuha lang sila ng mapa nung uh, uh huh? hopefully hindi ako na disconnect. In tablet gonna disconnect now, but I hope I'm still here. Or am I still here? And dito pa ba ako, guys? Okay, good. Yung tablet ko lang yung na disconnect. So here, 
Ang ginawa nila ay, okay, mapa ng Taal Volcano. Tapos ang ginawa nila, hinati nila yan sa limang regions. Pa, tapos yung mga regions, yung isang axis ng mga regions na yan, yan yung nag-serve as kanilang x-axis. So hinati nila yan sa mga regions. So ito yung region 1, region 2, region 3. So ito yung estimate nila sa mga regions na yan, sa mga sub-regions. Nakita nyo yan. Tapos, kinuha nila yung polynomial fit sa mga region na to. So, hindi sila, hindi sila nag-numerical, ah, hindi sila nag-polynomial interpolation. Nandu ang ginamit nila yung nasa module 5 yata o module 6, polynomial regression na hindi natin diniscuss. Uh, tapos, nung nakuha na nila yung function o yung polynomial na nagre-represent dun sa limang regions kung saan nila hinati yung Taal Volcano, Kinuha nila yung area under the curve, pero hindi sila nag-exactong integration. Ang ginawa nila, nag-Monte Carlo simulation sila, which is a numerical integration technique. And that's uh, that's what they get here. And then, okay, ito yung mga graphs, etc. Tapos uh, nakuha nila ang total region, ay, uh, total area of the, or estimate for the total, re, uh, total area ay 304.71. Tapos kinumpare nila yata to sa actual value. Or sa known, uh, yeah. So meron silang 0.44% error, which is spectacularly good. Ano? Kasi uh, ang ganda ng pagkakamesure nila using only an image from Google Maps and then uh, numerical integration technique. Right? So I'm way over time now, so uh, siguro I'll stop here. But siguro next time, when, uh, uh, siguro next meeting, if meron tayong matitirang 10 or 15 minutes, I can show you some of the projects as well. Para to give you some more ideas ng pwede nyong gawin. Alright, so I hope you got some idea of what to do. Alright, so um, any questions? Okay, so kung wala na, thank you guys for staying. Uh, enjoy the holiday tomorrow. And let's see each other again on Thursday, uh, on Friday. Bye, guys.